from the Jews. It has to do with John Lennon at all. But Zev Magen here, who's a very good friend of mine, and he's a contemporary of, of today, he's a Zionist thinker from today, and he says, you're a Jew. If you're going to be who you are, a Jew, then do it up. Don't be a default Jew, a checkbook Jew, a high holiday Jew, a peripheral Jew, or a marginal Jew. Be a bold, breathless Jew. Be a wild, wanton Jew. Be a, I'm going to milk this cultural identity thing for everything that it's got, Jew. Be a knowledgeable, thirsty, caring, daring, actively involved Jew. Okay? This, is what, this is our philosophy. We want to connect to as many of the people that are for KFJMC and all of the people that are in your synagogues to, to insist type of passion and fire in them. Because today, with what's going on with corona and, and, and the social isolation that we've been through, people are searching now for something more meaningful than just themselves. And there's going to be a big rush to bring back community, just like there was at the end of the 1918 uh, Spanish flu pandemic. Um, I think these two quotes really kind of touch at what TIFF is and what the ethos behind TIFF is. So now I'm going to play for you guys a, a explainer video that should completely explain what the purpose of the Israel Innovation Fund is, what are all of the different projects that the Israel Innovation Fund does, and why we do what we do, which is the most important thing to understand. Ready? Years ago, I realized something was wrong with Jewish nonprofits. They're not connecting to young people. All those gala dinners, silver plaques, it means this generation needs something completely different, more music, noise. The Israel Innovation Fund is something, it's the first nonprofit of its kind. It's run like a business, and it's meant to bring the best of Israeli culture to you. Wine, film, art, these, that's just the start. At TIFF, all of our projects generate their own revenue, and they're run like startups, lean and fast. We're based in Tel Aviv and Jerusalem, so our team is all over the country. We're bringing the reality of the vibrant, sexy, eccentric, creative Israel. Wine on the Vine lets people plant grapevines in Israel's top wineries for just $18. Proceeds help us promote Israel's amazing wines, and a portion goes to more than a dozen great Israeli charities. The Hebrew Wallpaper Project is so cool. We work with Israel's top street artists to create prints for people's homes and giant murals for the walls of Israel's neglected urban centers. What If Studios is a full-service film studio led by Daria Tereski, an award-winning filmmaker. Nothing moves the soul like a good party. Art, wine, music, food, and more. Imagine a night of Tel Aviv fun in your community. We can make it happen. This is the next phase of Zionism. It's young people creating culture and spreading it around the world. We can work together and bring Israel to you and you to Israel. Zionism was meant to be all along. Join, join, join us. Join us. Join the revolution. Okay, so that kind of gives you guys an overview of the ethos behind the organization, why we do what we do. And I'll, I'll answer questions after we get through this next video, uh, which is going to explain Wine on the Vine, our flagship program, and, and what we are partnering together with. Um, it's very important to understand that we are, met, we are built to engage the next generation. We are not here to give you the Israel of we were surrounded on all sides and everything is a miracle, okay? The reality is, is that we won the War of Independence and the Six Day War because of military intelligence, great preparation, and a ton of work that went into building this country and building the, the national spirit where everybody bands together in a time of need. You know, my, my dad always used to say, never write a check your body can't cash. Which, which always meant you can never take out more than you put in. And the Zionist movement is very clear about how much work needed to go into building this country, building its military, building its intelligence, building you know, the national culture with Hebrew. So it, it's very important that you understand that we are here to bring that reality to you. Now, I'm going to play this next video, uh, which has not been published yet. It's, it's a little rough, 
Um, this is a draft of our new Wine on the Vine explainer video, and this should give you a full understanding of what Wine on the Vine is and why we do it. What is Wine on the Vine? Wine on the Vine is planting grapevines in Israel the way your grandparents planted trees. For more than a century, we planted trees is a great way to connect to Israel. But there's a problem. We've been planting the wrong trees in the wrong places. Planting grapevines is like planting trees, but better. When you plant a grapevine, you participate in Israel's past, present, and future. You continue the original Zion stream cultivating the land while supporting Israel's booming wine industry that includes almost 400 wineries and produces some of the finest wines in the world. Vines produce the wine that we use to consecrate our most important life cycle events, from a baby's bris to a bar or bat mitzvah to a wedding, from every Shabbat dinner to Passover Seder. Every time we raise a glass to say l'chaim, we celebrate life with the fruit of the vine. Vines are a perfect gift. Each vine comes with a certificate you can dedicate to a friend or a loved one for any occasion, and a portion of the proceeds go to one of Israel's top charities. When you plant 10 or more vines, you'll receive a bottle of wine from your chosen winery so that you can start making your own l'chaim. And remember, there's no l'chaim without wine. There's no wine without vines. Plant your vine today at wineonthevine.org. Now, one of the great things about having film as one of our projects is that all of our videos and marketing material is all made in the house, which allows us to make a significant amount more of marketing material and films, as well as it makes it a lot cheaper. Very important to understand about us. So these are the wineries that we work with. You see Tulip, Tabor, Gush Etzion, Maya Winery, Bravdo, Hertzberg, Jezreel, and Shiloh. Now, these are wineries all over the country. It actually happens to be that Tulip, Jezreel, Maya, and Tabor are all, their wineries are all located very close to each other near Haifa, but their vineyards are all over the country. Gush Etzion is obviously located at the, the famous Gush Etzion Juncture. Shiloh Winery is in the hills of Samaria. Okay, Bravdo is in the, the, the municipal region of Gezer along with uh, the Hertzberg vineyards. Um, this allows us to have a portfolio of very high profile wineries in Israel. These are the largest wineries in Israel, except for Hertzberg. They only produce 5,000 bottles. These are the most successful brands in Israel, minus maybe three or four. And these are the brands that understand the spirit of connecting not only to Americans and people in the diaspora because they want them to buy their wine, but these are wineries and, and winery owners who all have incredible stories of either Aliyah or building social benefits. Or for instance, with Bravdo, uh, th their family has been a part of the Israeli wine industry since, since before the Carmel Winery. So, you know, I can answer any question that you'd like on all of these wineries, but I wanted to introduce the brands to you so that you're familiar with, because each one of them is ready for you to reach out to them, to plant a vine with them, to build a relationship with them, to connect with them, because all of these wineries have amazing stories. Okay. Now, we've recently just opened up a wine store here in Israel, and we will be launching our wine store in the United States in the next week or so. Uh, and we are actually very excited to be doing a partnership with you guys on this where we will be creating an affiliate code and hopefully using, um, uh, hopefully we will be using you guys as our test pilot to make sure the site works, deliveries happen on time, people get what they want and, and site perfection. Uh, I'm very excited about this because this is really going to be the first non-kosher branded but Israeli branded wine store. Um, and, and to me, this is a pinnacle of our growth and success because we have now become the only uh, organization that deals with wine tours, planting vines, selling wine, making film about vines and content that connects you to Israel through wine. Uh, and, and for us, it's, it's very exciting. And I'll go to that site in just a second. I believe there's just another slide. Now, this is very important. Uh, as a part of our launch for, the My, uh, for, for Israel Wines, uh, we are going to be doing a, a global campaign 
called My Lahayim. And this is going to be something that you kind of work in with Wine on the Vine in your local communities. And it's going to be the first way that you get people involved and, and, and you can initiate the idea of connecting to Israel, not only spiritually, but physically through wine. And the idea is for you to take a photo or video of your kiddush, upload it with the hashtag My Lachayim to whatever social media platform that you use and connect all, all over the world with Jews doing kiddush on Friday nights. I like to think of this as promoting keeping 50% of Shabbat. You have two, two ways that you keep Shabbat. You, 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 you have to observe the 39 malachot, which are you know, not tied in clothes, um, not using electricity, things like that. And then there is sanctifying the day, which is separating Shabbat from the rest of the week. That is actually done by making Kiddush. So we've got a lot of rabbis from around the world to hopefully be a part of this. We have a lot of content that we're waiting to release for this. We're actually going to be doing our test pilot in Arizona on June 11th, and then we wanted to open it up to everybody else. But we wanted to do a, a strong test pilot where we have a lot of partnerships, and I would very much love to connect to the branches of FJMC that are in Arizona because we're going to be doing this quite soon here, and I'll, I'll play the little animated video so you can kind of see the quality of the animation that we can produce. This is something that we do very quickly, but it also just gives you idea of some of our other hidden talents. Adam, can I ask a question? Yeah, can I play this and ask me the question? Sure. Cool. Let me uh, see if I can get everybody. I'll go back to sharing my screen later. Uh, and we'll go through the website as well afterwards. Uh, I would love to field any questions. Somebody said they have a question. Okay, let's go Miles first, then Gary. So the seven wineries are, are which of them are kosher and which are not? All of them that we work with uh, right now are kosher. So what? I didn't understand the comment about your wine store not being kosher. We're not. We're branding it as Israeli wine. They're kosher, but you're not claiming it's kosher. Is that what you're saying? Uh, what, what, there's a stigma around kosher wine because of the idea of mevushal wine, which is mm -hmm. wine that gets boiled. And, and, and you're technically, if you're not Shomer Shabbat, if you open a bottle that's not mevushal, it becomes unkosher. Or, or, you know, there's all these ridiculous laws that were created to be a fence around a fence around a fence. I would love on another conversation to have the Talmudic debate with you about it. Um, but we are trying to brand Israel wines as the place to buy Israeli wine, not just kosher wine. And we will be adding other brands as we extend our portfolio. Got it. Thank you. No problem. Gary? So will we be able to... So right now, you're not able to plant non-kosher vines. We'll be able to order non-kosher wine. We, we will be adding non-kosher wineries to our store in America uh, rather soon. I am in the discussion of acquiring the rights to import uh, a number of different non-kosher wineries in Israel. But I will say this, okay? The only difference between kosher and non-kosher is like, is the rabbi in the room or is he not in the room? And that is really the difference. There is nothing that really has to, other than does the gum inside the barrel have flour in it? That is really like the only major thing for, for Passover because it hummates that way. So usually all year long, you don't use gum in the barrel that keeps it together, that has flour in it, you use something else. That is really the only major difference between kosher and non-kosher wine. Um, the biggest difference is the mevushal, which is boiled and is code for destroy the wine and make it taste gross, which is what you're familiar with, with Manischewitz and Herzog and all, but, but all of the wines, let me make this very clear. All of the wines that we work with are wines that I drink, okay? And I, I'm not, I wouldn't say that I'm a wine snob, 
but they are very high quality fine wines from Israel. They also have a kashrut certificate making them kosher. Um, no, that's right. I'll, I'll get, let somebody else go first. You are recommending if we buy wines to consider mostly the tulip winery. Is that um, right? And the NIA listen, or MIA? I, I, I would definitely consider my own tulip. I would definitely consider Hertzberg. Um, you know, all of our wineries are absolutely excellent. Um, we, we work, we have the closest relationship with Maya Tulip, which are really under the same house, uh, and Hertzberg. Um, uh, they're also very easy for us to acquire in the States right now. Um, you know, but, but you, you guys are allowed to choose whatever wineries you like. I think for your 10,000, you know, goal, I think it would be smart to focus it, you know, so I'm not dealing with, okay, we only got 20 vines here and 30 vines here, but I would definitely suggest Maya, Tulip, and, um, and, and Hertzberg for sure. And they also make a, a, just a great quality bottle that you can get in the States as, as, at a reasonable price. Um, it, it, you can't really go wrong with planting your vine at any of the wineries though. And I, I don't want to play favorites, so to speak. Yeah, Smiles. So explain the, the distribution of funds, particularly you, you, you say you can select a charity to direct no. the course of the $18 to go to. How does this work? So with you guys, I'll share my screen again, okay? I can't believe I figured this out. This is your page, I believe. No, wait, hold on. Federation of Jewish Men's Clubs. This is your page. Okay, and if you see, you guys are the cause. This is your landing page. Par uh, it, you, you don't have to type in partners. You can just type in wine on the vine slash FJMC. The partners kind of ends up there automatically. So for any marketing material, you won't see the word partners there. So it's a little bit cleaner. And if you see, we've got, this is your page. So you can't choose other causes when people go to your page. Okay, we, we've made this very specific for you guys. Okay, and you have multiple options here, which is plant a single vine, plant a boutique vine, which is at one of our smaller wineries like Hertzberg, where it's the cost of 10 vines for one vine. It, it, it's really the same thing as just planting 10 individual vines. And then we have start a vine bank right here, which some of you have already started to open up vine banks where you bank your vines, as Gary likes to say. Um, where you purchase the vines, but you don't plant them and you wait to give them out. And then we've just added this, which we've been working on for quite a while to negotiate with the wineries on how to do this, which is to plant an entire vineyard. And what we've figured out is that the start of a vineyard is about a half a dunum. It's about 150 vines. So this is a minimum of 150 vine purchase, but with this option, okay, now you could plant a vineyard and bank the vineyard and, and give them out individually. We ask that you plant the vineyard and then we will put the vines from the vineyard in your bank afterwards. And usually we want to have a phone call with somebody when they're spending uh, this amount of money, usually anything over $1,800, I'll personally get on the phone with somebody, but I've been known to do it for $18. So to me, speaking to any person that wants to plant the vine is rather important. Um, but if you- Okay, if so, you, so you answered my, my question. Uh -huh. Except when I when I looked at the web page, it was confusing because it said you can select a charity. So I would not want where where uh, does it say I would that not you want, can select a charity? I, I don't. It, it was a few weeks ago I looked at it. I thought it maybe. That's so what we, we, we we did we did make that update because we did not know that we would have that problem. We had to uh, do some tinkering, uh, and we're also doing some tinkering for you guys for when you go. So I'll just go to plant a vine here. And with the vineyards, you get custom bottles and things like that. And that's really kind of what you guys are going for. But if you go get to that with Miles, Miles, that's been changed already. Okay, the great. The thing we're going to be doing is we're going to revenue share with our clubs and region. We're working on that now. So, and which, which is exactly what I was going to say. We are going to be adding a thing for you guys uh, where it will be choose your branch. And uh, Valdo will be getting in touch with Gary. Choose your club. So it says, 
it says choose your cause here, but it does not go to that page. So I'm just gonna choose a winery and this is how simple it is. And then it goes to the next page. We're gonna add that choose your club. What club are you from? So that we can revenue and share with the club in the region. Exactly. And we are gonna be, we're gonna be adding that. This is where you fill out what you want in your vine. So you could say in honor of mom and dad, because I love you. Okay, that's the little message I wanna put in there, planted by Adam, planted, I'm the purchaser, so my name is in there. This is my purchaser's email so that we can send two versions of the certificate, one to who it's supposed to go to, another to the person that purchased it so that there's a copy, okay? Now, here's the great thing about recipient email. Let's say you're planting your vine like I am for somebody else other than myself, but I wanna print it out and give it to them. You can put the same email in there so it doesn't go to anybody but yourself. And then we have this option if you'd like us to mail the certificate and it's an extra $5. And then this is where you would put in the recipient's address. Now I'm gonna unclick that for the sake of unclicking it. And then you go here to next and you plant your vine and this is your confirmation page. And we're actually gonna be combining these two steps that you guys just went through into one page over the next couple of weeks. So everything's on one page and it's a little bit easier for you. And then you go to your confirmation and you see it says two vines have taken root at the Hertzberg Winery. It says exactly what I typed in. In honor of, I chose in honor of, and then I wrote mom and dad in lowercase. I didn't use an and symbol. Okay, it's exactly what I typed in. I didn't write Adam Scott Bellows. I wrote Adam Bellows. Okay, I chose planted by instead of with love or whatever. And then my little message, I wrote because I love you. And this, this is of the, I, I can't remember which vineyard this is, but it's a very beautiful picture. And then you just click, I'm out of. Hart Park. I, I actually don't think it's. Hertzberg, believe it or not, even though it looks like it. Said, it says Hertzberg right there. Right, right. Oh, I mean, the picture, the picture of this winery. Oh, oh, oh. oh I don't, I, I can't remember. But yes, it says the winery. It says the number of vines. So they know because there's a difference. If you're sending somebody five vines, you've made a, almost a hundred dollar donation. If you're sending somebody one vine, it's, it's eighteen dollars. If they have this and it says ten vines, they can bring this to the winery and they'll get their bottle of wine. And then you go next and you basically fill out you know, your details. If you haven't already created an account, this is where it will ask you for your account to make a password and a username. And we had a small um, thing. So there's my submission and I'm just not filling everything out. And that's why it's having an issue. But normally it just goes to the next. We haven't it's had any process. I'm sorry. It's a pretty simple process. It's a very simple process. And we're actually seeing our, my orders were successful. Four vines, two and two, boom, boom, boom. And then if you haven't made, if you have a coupon code, this is where people, you know, would type anything that maybe gives them a discount if we do something special. This is what the form looks like if you have not made an account with us, okay? You can choose all these different types of payments. Uh, everything runs through PayPal, so you can do it through PayPal. Can be an international card. Notice how here it's got the confirmation of the purchaser's email and the recipient's email. Very important. The message is right there. So it gives you a second chance, even though you don't see the certificate, just to double check that you've done everything right. And you click where you want to go and you place the order. And that's, and that is it. Um, now, just to show you guys quickly, um, our Israel wine site, you can see, you can choose between America and Israel. Okay, now all of these prices are incorrect, gentlemen. While this site is live, I ask you not to go to it yet. You will be getting an email shortly. First thing that happens is, is a place to put in your email so that we can capture customer information. Okay, and you can see this is very easy. We've got specifically the wine shop, all the different wineries. Just see how this page looks. Oh, it takes you to our wineries. And then if you click one of the wineries, it will take you to all the wines and the story that are available. Very easy, very simple, much simpler. We're adding a space on Ask the Winemakers where you can ask any question that you want uh, about the wine. This is our About Us. And then 
We also have a plant a vine where you can come and plant a vine and it takes you to plant now. But we can't do that through the, uh, through the FJMC website. The FJMC partner page. Um, we can or we can't? We can figure that out. I, I don't really see this site really driving a lot of vine planting personally, uh, because this is a site that's meant to sell wine, not vines, but we do have the option here. Um, but you know, if, if it comes down the line that we have to make like a specific URL, that's a version of Israel wines, you know, and, and it directs you directly to an F, the FJMC vine planting thing, that, that is fine. And then if you notice, when you go to the wine shop, okay, it gives you all these different sections of how you want to search for your wine. So let's just say I want to buy a bottle of Hertzberg, okay, and you go to add to your cart, okay, and you'll be able to order cases and half cases and everything like that. You go to your cart up here, and then there's going to be a spot for a coupon code right down here. And this is where people would type FJMC so that we know, and then you would press apply coupon. It's going to say there's no coupon because we haven't made the coupon yet. But, and, and that for our test, we're going to be giving you guys 50 cents a bottle because we're only making $1.50 on any bottles that we sell right now, which is why we're working on importing our own wines and, and kind of, this is a whole new thing that has been kind of added to the Wine on the Vine program, but it's going to be great for synagogues and people like you who have large audiences that drink wine. And I can stop sharing my screen now. Yes, Bob. Can't hear you. Richard, can you please, can you please mute yourself, Richard? Yep. So uh, sometimes the space bar mutes and sometimes it doesn't. Sorry for the delay. A, no, no, no. It was that Richard. Richard had some static on his end for some. So, he, he looks like he's sitting by the beach. So the question I had was um, in the um, uh, U.S. store, uh, if if FJMC decides to really focus on a couple of wineries, which which I think is a very good idea. Um, I do too. Those stores be uh, those one. Can we be sure that those wines are also available in the U.S.? Um, yes. Yes, all of the wineries that we work with have wines available in the U.S., especially Tulip and Hertzberg. Okay. And, and, I mean, Bravdo has two wines that are available. I'm discussing becoming their importer of all of their wines. Uh, understand, um, one of the reasons why I started this organization, or really this project, okay, uh, and, and I've been very fortunate to have an amazing team that has helped me perfect it over the years, was that there is the ultra-Orthodox kosher mafia that has hiked up Israeli wine, that has mismarketed Israeli wine. You don't see Israeli sections in stores. You see kosher sections in stores. So uh, we are working very hard to lower the costs of the wine, bring the wine in directly ourselves, sell it directly ourselves. It will take some time, okay, over the next two years for us to really be in a great place where the wine is bought for a great quality price and we can sell it for an even cheaper price. Um, but right now we are buying it uh, via wholesalers and distributors, retailers and reselling it through our brand uh, because the majority of the organization, I mean, it was made very clear that um, we will lose a lot of customer data to our competition if we uh, do everything with other partners on the sales side of the wine. So um, for instance, um, one of the things that we're doing that's rather interesting for the Myla Chaim test pilot in Arizona is that I, we are purchasing a bulk amount of wine and then people are going to plant three or four vines to be a part of the test pilot and they'll pick it up, pick up their wine at either the Phoenix JCC, the Scottsdale JCC, the Tucson JCC, or one of the synagogues that we work with, which is uh, an Orthodox shul in Scottsdale. It happens to be the largest synagogue in Arizona and that's called Congregation Bet Filah. It's an Orthodox synagogue filled with Reformed Jews. It's actually quite fascinating, believe it or not. Like um, it, the, the rabbi there is just a superstar. So I think um, that, I mean, that, that would be very appealing if we know, for instance, that there's that 
wine bottle bonus but planting 10 vines and and one can pick up that wine in the united states uh, for, so we could we could definitely do that where you know you guys purchase a bulk amount of wine from us for each synagogue or each club and then you give the wine to them directly we have to figure out it we have to figure it out so that it works okay with the taxes okay and the 501c3 of you know if you guys purchase so, it from us and hold on to it and then we keep the money from the vines that you know pays for those bottles we can figure that out i really love the idea of planting vines and getting to pick them up at your synagogue at your jcc um whatever and i would uh, love one of, so so for the uh, for, one of the, the thoughts that we're we're talking about is that if we do plan enough vines we'll have all the bottles of wine shipped to Chicago for the convention and then people can pick up their bottle of wine at the convention or somebody can take it back to them. And that would be the easiest way to make the distribution without creating costs involved and the headache of distributing to all the regions and clubs. The other thing would be, it could be the wine that we use on Friday night at convention. Those, those are all details that we can, that we, that can do. we discussed that with Gary and, and uh, I really like the idea that we won't, because the whole point is that you come to Israel and you get your bottle of wine. So I really love this idea of you guys have this goal of 10,000 vines to get planted. That's like a hundred bottles or something like that it's nothing for me to get the wine and bring it to Chicago. Um, and that, that way it's awesome. handled. Um, and I, and I, that was Gary's idea and I, I more power to him. It was a great idea yeah. to you, sir. Yes, Richard. I, um, I guess I, I'm not clear on the wine on the vine pitch. Uh, how much of this $18 goes to one charity or another, and how much is, shall we say, overhead? How do you define- You get $6 a vine. And then the $12, where does that $3 go? $3 goes to uh, planting the vine. Yeah. Okay. Some, anywhere, our, we have a fluctuating cost of anything between $1.50 to $2 in terms of operating costs and operating the digital platform, and then we keep the other six. So it really becomes a 50-50 split between you and us. So who is we? The Israel Innovation Fund. Okay, and what does the is in the Israel Innovation Fund is what that video showed. Correct. It's uh, opening communication and lifestyle changes for young Israelis. Is that is no? That our our goal is to provide cultural programs and events and projects that connect you to Israel through either the products that we sell or the experiences that we provide. So like when I, when I say a product that we sell, I refer to like a vine because you pay for a vine and you get a certificate or a beautiful painting like you see right here, which sometimes we donate to nonprofits or synagogues to use for fundraising events. And what we'll do is we'll say, you know, start the minimum bidding at $5,000, you know, to cover our costs and, and we'll split the profit 50-50. Um, so, you know, we've seen paintings go for like $10,000 before, and the synagogue will usually make five to $7,000. Um, you know, we, we, we do sell prints as well, which, which go to fund our, our project of painting the periphery, like you saw. Um, and and we, we were about to do our first city of Demona, but something happened with the municipality, and then we were going to do Jerusalem and, and parts of East Jerusalem, and then Corona happened. Um, but uh, that, that's kind of the big, you know, we, we are, we're a 501c3, but we run like a business that provides a social benefit. So we really took the idea of the original Zionist institutions and kind of just gave them a reboot for the 20th century. And that, that's really how we like to think of ourselves. We're like, we're rebooting the Zionist movement to make it palatable for the next generation. And that oh, they, so is there a, is there any separation between the wine on the vines campaign and the selling of wines and the foundation, TIFF? Oh, totally separate. All the profits, all the profits of Israel wines go to TIFF. Okay. But, and they're separate organizations with a separate 
balance sheet and stuff. No, we're, I mean, like, the, it's it, the, the, we, in, in Israel, a nonprofit is able to sell wine. It's not a problem for a nonprofit to sell wine, especially when we're a nonprofit promoting Judaism and observance and making bracho. And, and on, this, on this end in Israel, there's no issue whatsoever. We are looking into it in the States as of right now. Our lawyers haven't found any problems with what we're doing because we're promoting a religious observance and the wine is kosher, okay, which is kind of a plus for us um, and that it's, it's still a religious item. And we are not, um, how do I explain this? We are not giving anything to anyone because people have to come to Israel to get it. <clears throat> um, and and the, the wine store is a for-profit wine store with no overhead and no employees. Um, it's just a digital store that you purchase. You cannot get a tax deduction from it, but the proceeds of every dollar that goes into it goes into the 501c3. Okay. It's, it's a little bit fuzzy for me in terms of telling people, you know, uh, explaining how much, you know, where is the overhead and where is the actual charitable uh, work being done, but I'll try to get into that myself. Well, our, I, I can explain to you what our, our overhead is, our few, are the few members of our team that we have, unlike the majority of the federations or the JNF or the ADL, we don't have millions of dollars in overhead. Okay, um, you know, our, our entire budget is less than the cost of the CEO of, of the ADL uh, of, of, uh, of JFNA and of the JNF. So we, we cost to operate uh, about one one hundredth, if not one one thousandth of the majority of the Jewish organizations out there. So um, for example, in, in Cincinnati, Ohio, the Federation head makes $336,452.27. That's about our entire budget for operation costs. So the other thing that's very important to understand is that we are completely located in Israel. So every dollar comes to Israel. All of our employees are in Israel. Every dollar that gets spent while it flows through an American 501c3, it immediately comes to Israel. So that's a very big Adam? difference. Yes. Adam, it's Tom Sudo. I think you're missing something that you don't want to say because of your, your, your modest. And that is, for, for everybody to understand, Adam started this. He's a successful entrepreneur who's put his own money into creating this project. So this is not a way that he and the other people are making money. It's their way of giving back. They, they, they are actually, in the, they were the actual seed funders of the project. But I, you know, I, in Richard, in, in, in answer to your concern, you know, if, if we wanted to make an analogy, it's $18 to plant a tree. And so, you know, you would have to ask the same question of JNF. How much of that $18 is going to uh, infrastructure, uh, all the things that we're told about, uh, how much of that is going to uh, over and so on. And, uh, you know, from what it, I'm hearing, substantially um, amount uh, uh, less going to uh, more, I mean, it's a substantially better deal here. Um, there's always something, I mean, if you say, well, it's only $3 going to the winery, you say, well, where's all that money? But, I think in this case, um, uh, it sounds like it's a better, a better deal. I, I would just say in addition, I have not taken a salary um, since we started TIF. Uh, our salaries are quite modest here in Israel as well. Uh, in, a, in addition to that, um, our overhead is quite small. Uh, we don't have a Manhattan office to take care of. We don't have employees all over the United States fundraising for us, we, we, we do all of it our, ourselves. Um, and we've, we've built the organization with a budget now, I think we've spent about 1.25 million in the last uh, three and a half years, which is all, I mean like, which really is, I believe less than what the majority of Jewish CEOs have made in the last three years. The, uh, the head of the JFNA before he retired was making $750,000 a year, okay? so. Like, you know, it's, it's, I understand the, the question and uh, it should be looked at as the $3 that goes to the vine, to the wineries, those vines are getting planted. Okay. This isn't, um, 
the JNF, and I, and I don't mean to speak ill of the JNF, but JNF doesn't plant trees anymore. Okay, they still sell them, but they don't plant them. Okay, and if they plant them, they're in a specific place to give you a tourist experience, and then many times they'll take the plants out and, and have somebody replant them. Um, so our, our goal was really to reconnect to this type of green Zionism that's returning to the agricultural ideas of, of connecting physically to, to the land and, and also giving back to small businesses. And, and, and not only that, producing and planting something that will create more and more jobs in Israel, which is very important to us. You know, I really like to think when I go into a, a town in the periphery, okay, the first thing in my head is, okay, if we paint that, how many jobs are going to come from that? If we do this and we do this and we do this and we gentrify this, how is this going to help the town? And that's really like our, our goal. Vines create jobs, vines create business, and vines connect people to Israel. I, I hope I answered your question, Richard. Uh, Miles. So first I got to say, this is, a, this is a remarkable program. I really... I'm really excited about it, and I, I'm, I'm thrilled that we're partnering together. Uh, I'm, still, so much. I'm, still, I'm still fuzzy on the bottle of wine you get for every 10 vines. Mm -hmm. Within FJMC, are we trying to bank those so that if we sell a certain amount, we have wine at convention, or are we still allowing people to get their bottle of wine uh, if they get 10 vines and, and do they have to literally come to Israel for them or is there another so way to get it? One of the very important things, and I just want to add one thing before I answer this question about what Richard was asking. Richard, when we work through ourselves and not through a partner like you guys, we allow people to choose other charities in Israel that we direct a portion of the, the money to. So we work with four very large, very, um, I guess you could say, uh, high impact, low cost charities. One of them is the National Food Bank, which is my favorite. Um, so we de I definitely get the philanthropic question. And when we work on our own and sell our own vines, we donate 50% of the proceeds to a charity that other people choose. Yeah, so that's a little I bit, again, that, that's again, a lot of confusion is potentially there because of the special situation with FJMC. Well, and we actually have a lot of different organizations selling vines. You guys are just gonna be the largest. Okay, so, so then what you've said is that FJMC is the charity. Exactly. That, the independent charity that you, you referred to in your documentation and that the rest of the funds, the, the $12, goes to the, the TIF vision and to that as its primary, as the charity that is uh, we're, we're, we're promoting. Right, exactly. I mean, you should really look at us as a new type of JNF, ADL, Hadassah, um, KKL, uh, any of the many organizations that, B'nai B'rith, they, they all do very similar things to what we do. We just do what we do in our own way. Miles, I might let me add one thing. I might add one thing to what Adam's saying, and, and I think it's really important. This is a program that will help bring youth back to, back to uh, FJMC. I really believe that because this is, this is kind of what the young people are looking for, something like this. Well, I can tell you, I'm going to go to every single one of your synagogues and host a wine party, so we better bring some young people. I, I, <laughs> I have a lot of energy and a lot of time, and I'm not married and I don't have kids, so I got time to travel to make sure that everybody gets connected to Israel through Wine on the Vine. Miles, what was your, your mother, question? Your mother's not happy about that. You know what? My, my, my mother is doing just fine. I, she knows that I am. <laughs> Like, I, 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 got a date, I got a date tomorrow night with a nice English girl. Like, she's coming over for wine and cheese. It's going to be fantastic. She'll be happy about that. Uh, I, I like to say I, all I want to do is plant the vines, drink the wine, and make the babies, and I'll be happy. Uh, Miles, I, I, Miles I, we got to get to your question. What was your question again? So I, uh, could you explain again the, um, the bottle of wine that is a, that is a, a so, benefit of buying 10 vines? Yeah, so... In terms of being a 501c3 and not getting anything for what you pay, our, our, the way that we set the program up was that every, after, because really it takes four years for a vine to be usable and kosher. So we used to say, you have to wait four years. And then when you come to Israel, you pick up your bottle of wine. Now we worked it out where it's 
if you buy it and you come to Israel, you can pick it up because you're getting you're getting it in, in another country. You're usually drinking it at the winery or in your hotel, and you're not even bringing it back to the United States. That is how we do this normally. Gary came up with a great idea where you know if you guys are planting ten thousand vines, I'm just going to go buy a hundred bottles and you know with our own money and, and bring them to the convention, and you guys can do whatever you want. So I have no problem with that. It, there's no way to really. I don't think, if anything, we're bending some rules. We're not breaking them. You know, I, I feel like we're using our, our Jewish sechel to get around the loopholes, so to speak. Um, and, and really, for 2021, I think we can discuss how we can do it, getting the wine to individual chapters, or just once a month, you know, your chapter throw a wine on the vine um, kiddish to get young people there. And, and you, we use that money um, that's normally for wine, you know, to send to the synagogue. And, and that'll be however you guys want to market it to your constituents. And we could also decide that for the next year at the conference, which I'm, I'm very excited to attend. And, you know, Gary may not realize this, but it is my hometown, Chicago, whether or not I grew up in Cincinnati. It's where I've always referred to as home. And, uh, you know, we, I'd be more than happy to discuss any type of thing that we can do to okay, make you so more comfortable. The bottom line is we shouldn't really be really be promoting the sale of vines because you can get a bottle of wine every, every time you sell 10 of them. That's you can't. Not, that's no, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, it, it, but you can say 10 vines will go, 10, a bottle of wine will be donated to the synagogue. You know, that, that you can do without question. Or, the, you know, this year, whenever you plant 10 vines, wine will be made available for you to take home at the convention. Or if you plant 10 vines, you can pick up a bottle at the convention. It's, you shouldn't have a problem saying that. And if we get in any trouble, then I just. Miles, that's all part of our marketing. We yeah. can give people the option of, of donating it back to FJMC for a convention or however we want to do it. But if I'm not correct, if I'm not incorrect, 10,000 vines would yield 1,000 bottles of wine. Is that correct? 10 times 1,000 is 10,000? Okay, just want to make sure. I think we're going to get some feedback from the clubs and the regions on what they might like to see and how they might want to run with the program. And we can get that back to you also and brainstorm about it. For sure. Well, that's up to our committee right now, uh, Peter. And we'll, we'll present that once the committees come up with, um, with, a, with a, at least a plan. Um, uh, we have a great committee and, and we're all kind of on the same page. We're, so we're trying to uh, develop that and then we'll bring it back to the executive committee after we've developed the plan. I just want everybody to know, on Friday I heard somebody passed away um, and I went on the Wine of the Vine lot, uh, site, bought a vine, sent it to the family. By, by after Mozi Shabbos, they had responded to me that, and they were very touched by, the, by this. They, they had not heard of it. They saw this as a really unique way to support Israel. And again, I think beyond you know, what I did for the in memory of the, the father-in-law, I think they're now thinking about how they can get involved as well because they're, they're really touched by it. I, I actually did the exact same thing this morning. Uh, Shmuel, the, the, the America's rabbi, Shmuley Batea, lost his father today, and I'm very close with his daughter. So I sent, um, I sent uh, Hannah a vine for... Um, the loss of her grandfather and it was I mean she was overwhelmed you know I mean like it really is it's, it's much more impactful than a tree personally in my opinion because it's so new um, the, the certificate is quite beautiful and, and it really does it says that you took the time you know and that's the really the big thing I uh, yeah I, today's, I, Javier, I, today's Javier Rosenswag's uh, oh, I forget if it's to a son or daughter I don't remember uh, bar bat mitzvah, and I'm going to send them a vine as soon as we're off this call. From your wine bank. Thank you, thank you for planting. From this your is, wine this bank, is, right? This is so Alex. If, you bank, if you bank the vines, you don't have to keep going in and filling out all the information. You just take one vine or two vines from your bank, and then they just deduct it until you don't have any vines left. So it makes it a lot easier. That's what I did. I have a bank, and I've been using them, and I'll use them today. And, and Alan, any of you gentlemen, if there's a problem, 
Okay, I'm always available via WhatsApp on my phone. Um, my, uh, Samantha, who's not on this call, our COO, and my assistant is, is really great with my email. Um, I'm sure you will notice I very rarely send an email because I'm inept when it comes to technology. Um, I, I just hate email. I'm a big texter and a voice note guy. Um, we're always going to be here to help you with any of any issues that arise or, or helping you do a large scale planting. I mean, you know, we'd love to see as many of you guys uh, plant vineyards in Israel because it's, uh, it's going to make a huge impact for the country. Um, and, and I'm always going to be here to help with anything that you guys need. So this is, uh, this is, this is Alex. Can I, can I say something? Go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Uh, so I want to, I just want to address Miles' uh, question again uh, regarding, you know, should we, should we be promoting uh, the, the bottle of wine after 10 vines or not? And, and I think we, we can. Um, and, and, and just want to reiterate that we are going to crawl before we walk and walk before we run. And, and our goal is to, sell 10,000 vines between now and convention. And then at convention, when Adam's there, um, I would love to see the bottles of wine actually being distributed to people that want to pick them up because it's going to, it's going to, it's going to create a moment. Uh, it's going to um, help us explore and, and explode this thing at convention, really make a big, a big deal out of it uh, at convention. So um, I think what, you know, Miles, what, what Gary said, the committee is going to kind of work on how people want their bottle of wine, whether they want to donate it, whether they want it at convention, whether they want, you know, those different ways. Um, but I think, I think it can be a big win for us. Uh, uh, Tom, uh, I, I'm, I see how we have on our agenda to discuss this this week at our executive committee meeting. Um, are we going to be ready to, to, to launch this to really get the word out? Uh, sorry, I was muted. Um, we're working on it right now. The committee is still working. The committee met on Friday again. The, uh, Alex and Gary and the committee have been working very hard. So I don't know if we'll have a final plan, but uh, I know that Aaron Altman is working on a marketing plan right now. We'll bring the committee. We'll bring the executive committee up to date, and then we'll probably talk about you know, a formal launch in the next couple a couple weeks after that. But we're still working on the marketing. We're going to have that out for this week, uh, okay. Alex and Aaron and I, uh, to the committee, and then the committee will okay it, and then you can send it to the um, to the um, to the committee, the executive committee. Um, you know, and so I, I think everybody on our team. I think we have a really good team, and everybody's got great ideas. So I think we can get this thing wrapped up pretty quickly. I just want to say this is really exciting, and I really appreciate Gary. Um, not losing sight. I mean, this he he raised this a couple of years ago. We we kind of shot it down because he didn't understand it. He came back. We understood it. It's really an exciting opportunity. It's a way to get young people involved. It's a way to get us involved. It's fun, and it's a way to really tie us to Israel. And uh, I'm really excited as an organization. And I and I've used this three or four times in the last two weeks, and the response has been wonderful. And uh, we really look forward to the, you know making making our mark, and and then hopefully. Uh, all going to Israel and having a, a wonderful time drinking wine. Can I just ask a specific question? This is about the, the bank. Um, if one buy, because I don't, I haven't looked at the website in the last week or two. I don't know if it's changed. But when I looked at banking, there wasn't a comment that if you bought 10 vines in your bank, that you got that one bottle credit, which I, whatever we do with that. Correct. That's correct. Okay. And that's because when you bank 10 vines, I don't, we don't know if you're sending 10 vines together, if you're sending a vine to this person, a vine to that person, two vines to them. So when you buy vines, it, it's, it's by the individual. But then when you send them out, you, know, you can just send them to yourself you know, and then do it. What I would recommend um, is, is really, if, if you want to bank vines and, and ensure that you get your wine, I would plant a vineyard and we'll bank them for you and we'll make bottles okay, for your vineyard with your name on it and whatever special thing that you want to do. And then you send however many vines individually that you want to send, one, two, three, four, whatever. But with 150 vines, you get 15 bottles. So let's say you want to send somebody one vine, you know, but you also want to send them a bottle. You can do that with that. You know, you can do whatever you want. Um, it, it's really up to you. And, and gentlemen, Please note, I'm going to be as flexible as I can be when it comes to 
the wine and you know who gets what it, it, it's you know it's in my interest to make you guys happy as long as it, it doesn't hurt us financially so um i don't want you to worry about Fine, fine, you know, five this, five there, whatever. Um, we'll make it work so that you guys are happy. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, thank you very much for uh, to Adam for appearing with us uh, all the way from Israel. It was my thank pleasure, to, gentlemen. Thank you to all our participants. Uh, I can endorse this product myself. I've used it. I'm very happy with it. Uh, any other questions before we say sayonara? Alan, I just want to thank you for all your hard work with the uh, webinars. This is great. This is another great one. You know, this is, we, really, we really all appreciate your hard work on this. Oh, thanks, Tom. And, and gentlemen, I'll be hosting a webinar tomorrow night uh, on our Facebook page. Um, you can just type in the Israel Innovation Fund or Wine on the Vine. And uh, it's with Gil Troy on uh, the six major Zionist leaders. And I believe tomorrow night we're doing Labor Zionism and Golda Meir. So you guys should definitely check that out. That's great. Adam's also going to help uh, with our new, we're going to have an affinity group on wine. I'm not sure how specialized that group will be. And he's uh, going, he's indicated a willingness to do a wine tour uh, for the, of each wine, of, pardon me, of each winery, which will then help uh, kickstart that affinity group. We thank we've him very already, much. We've already started filming our content for it, actually. Oh, that's we, great. We, you, you. you wouldn't believe the last two weeks how hot it was. I went out for you guys during a heat wave in Israel. Max Hertzberg, 90 years old, stood out in 99 degree weather in the hottest area in Israel to, to, to make a film for you guys. Wow. I want you to know that. Well, thank, thank you. you. We hope nobody collapses. I'm no, sure call us to you did Let us know. <laughs> thank you all. Have a good day, everybody.